The news agents did a very interesting analysis of Kemi Badenoch and Robert Jenrick, uh, the leadership race contenders. And there's a curious dichotomy between the two. Uh, <coughs> two figures vying not just for party leadership, but potentially the premiership, potentially the keys to number 10. And the stakes are high for the Conservative Party, battered as it is, yet both candidates represent a version of conservatism unapologetic. However, their respective visions for party and for country reveal notable distinctions in philosophy, background and approach. Jenrick, an erstwhile Remainer, has notably tacked right since his tenure as Immigration Minister, a role he claims revealed to him the failure of the British state to uphold basic border security. In this experience, the Jenrick himself states radicalised him driving him to advocate for Britain's withdrawal from the European Convention on Human Rights. Jenrick's pivot from One Nation Tory to ardent nationalist reflects a wider movement within his party, a shift from Cameronian centrism to a rhetoric reminiscent of Nigel Farage, and his support base among the right, including figures like Danny Kruger, signals his alignment with the more traditional conservative values of sovereignty and security. However, as Katie Balls of The Spectator aptly notes, Jenrick's orthodox approach uh, could make him appear typical Tory, an image less effective in attracting the wider electorate. Kemi Badenoch, by contrast, defies convention with her outspoken and often combative style, and she has honed in on culture wars, uh, a strategy that has endeared her to a base frustrated with perceived liberal dominance in British institutions. Badenoch's background, a self-proclaimed engineer, informs her perspective on state mechanics, and she advocates uh, a deep re-evaluation or even a purge of what she sees as anti-conservative biases within the system. Where Jenrick presents specific policies, Badenoch's appeal rests on a Thatcheresque conviction, a desire to reshape Britain from the ground up, and her refusal to repeal certain EU laws, despite Brexit loyalty, demonstrates a pragmatic streak not always present in culture warriors, suggesting a leader capable of adapting when policy meets practicality. In this ideological skirmish, Jenrick embodies calculated Tory orthodoxy, while Badenoch offers disruptive charisma. Should either become Prime Minister, the result would likely mean an intensified focus on immigration and sovereignty, basically re reaffirming Brexit for a second time. It would be Brexit Mark II. However, the question remains whether this version of conservative leadership could resonate broadly with an electorate worn out by divisive rhetoric and looking for solutions to tangible concerns on the economy and the NHS. In this sense, as Badenoch and Jenrick each pursue their own brand of conservatism, the race serves as a microcosm for the party's struggle to redefine itself in the middle of the shifting sands of parliamentary misalignment.